There are so many parts of your body affected when you have hiatal hernia syndrome. And today I wanna to talk to you about what's called the migrating motor complex, abbreviated MMC. And what this is is a natural rhythmic pattern that, that includes your stomach and your small intestine that basically propels undigested food, bacteria, toxins, toward your colon where then you can excrete it. So it's almost like a, you know, a broom, brushing out the bad and moving it along so you can excrete it, which obviously is very healthful and is a sign of a properly functioning gut or digestive tract. So the whole process of this, these undulating actions doesn't start until three hours after a meal. And it lasts for about 90 minutes or a little bit longer. So this is a key reason why you don't wanna just be grazing all day long, but you want to have uh, specific meal times. I do like three times a day. I think it's very difficult to get enough protein uh, depending on your age. If you're super young, then not a big problem at all. But I do find that it's difficult to get enough protein if you're not having uh, three, three meals a day and, and breakfast and dinner being on the kind of larger end uh, because then we go into a fast and we're coming out of a fast. But getting back to our migrating motor complex, it uh, doesn't begin its process until three hours after you're done with your meal. Now, if you're drinking water or unsweetened coffee or unsweetened tea, um, totally fine during that process, but any food is, is, is gonna halt it. And then the whole process of this cleanse takes about 90 minutes at, at the shortest, and then some, some research says up to 115 minutes. So, um, so within that time frame, so that's why you wanna allow minimally four and a half to five hours in between your meals so that you have time for this migrating motor complex to do its wonderful activities. Now, what are things that are going to get in the way of that? Having SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is very much associated with hiatal hernia syndrome. IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, is also associated with the MMC, not functioning the way it should. Having uh, infections of the colon uh, that we find when we do a microbiome test. This, these are things that are in common between the migrating motor complex not working as well as it should, and also uh, a factor that is going to increase your likelihood of hiatal hernia syndrome. So what is treatment? And that's where it's interesting because stress is a big factor that you want to look into. And what we find with hiatal hernia syndrome is because of the vagus nerve being irritated, and uh, which is another another part of the treatment, vagus nerve normalization, but also when the vagus nerve is irritated, when the stomach is pushing up on the diaphragm, we go into sort of a fight or flight reaction, which really increases our stress response, can have panic attacks, shortness of breath, just this feeling of overwhelming doom, and, and the person does not know why, but it's associated with the diaphragm spasming versus floating, as I like to say, effortlessly. And that same elevation of the diaphragm uh, interferes with the vagus nerve, which wraps uh, like a web around the lower esophagus and irritates it. So um, when you're looking at treatment, you wanna look at anything that's overwhelming uh, the nervous system creating stress. Certainly lifestyle stress needs to be looked at, but I'm more focusing on this association between your ability to cleanse your colon and get rid of bacteria and undigested food, etc., and hiatal hernia syndrome, which tends, there's, they're, they're, they can really aggravate one another, and that's problematic because fixing one is really fixing the other. Um, now, there's also the lifestyle factors of how often people eat, uh, intermittent fasting. Uh, let's just talk about 
how, how long a period of time between dinner and breakfast. Uh, I like about 12 to 14 hours, and that is a level that's been shown with research to be very safe. It really gives the body a nice break to, to once again cleanse itself and repair. So uh, I know a lot of people do much longer fasts, but I like the 12 to 14 hour window myself. Every once in a while I can go a little bit longer. It, it just, it kind of depends on you and other factors that we're looking into. Uh, but let me see my notes, see if I forgot anything. Um, yeah, so between the stress component, which as I said is, is aggravated by the diaphragm spasm associated with hiatal hernia syndrome and the stress component associated with the vagus nerve, which as I mentioned earlier, is similarly aggravated with hiatal hernia syndrome. Um, both of those factors between the vagus and the stress is really um, immobilizing to a degree or diminishing the function of the migrating motor complex, which is absolutely mandatory to have functioning optimally if you want a healthy gut. So a, a bit circular, but they really do depend upon one another quite a bit. And so I wanted to bring to you that association because the human body is such an incredible machine. And um, the fact that it has its own cleansing system uh, in, in the gut and, and this rhythmic pattern that occurs every, um, uh, as soon as you haven't been eating for three hours, your body goes into that that pattern. It's it's a beautiful thing, and knowing about it, right? Knowledge is power. So now that you know, you can take some actions to make sure that you have time for your migrating motor complex to to perform its beautiful activities and and see how that affects your gut health. And those of you who need some more assistance, we're here for you. Uh, by the way, please uh, give a thumbs up to the channel. Uh, subscribe. We definitely want this information to get out to more and more people and that's how it happens. So if you like the content, please do that. And if you need assistance, we're here for you.